So as you know that we are doing a series on Acts of Apostles and the name of the series is God of Power, not People of Power, not People in Power, <laughs> right? God of Power. Why? Because the book of Acts is not the story of men and women who did great and significant things for God. It is the story of God who used insignificant people like them to do great things through them, right? And that is what he is continuing to do even today, right? Is there anyone sitting here is thinks of himself as a very significant person? None of us are significant, right? We all are insignificant people and God uses insignificant people like you and me to do great things. That is what we wanted to be reminded of. That is what we want to take home when we finish this series, right? So last Sunday, we saw uh, Jubin preach from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 14. And we saw this incident of the coming of the Holy Spirit, right? Something really new that people were experiencing, something new that the disciples were experiencing, something new that the people around them were watching them, they're experiencing, right? What does all, all that mean, right? And uh, Jubin asked, what does this mean? What is the significance of Pentecost for you, for them, for all of us? And he said two things. One, that Jesus' promise to never leave you was fulfilled. When he sent the Spirit of God, when he was leaving, he said, I am going, but I will send you a helper. So when the Spirit of God ascended on the people, Jesus' promises to never leave was fulfilled. He is with us. His spirit is moving in and through us, right? And the second thing we saw, the Holy Spirit's arrival brought many gifts for us. The Holy Spirit's arrival brought many gifts for us. Today, we're going to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 36. We're going to look at Peter's sermon at the Pentecost. Like immediately after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we see Peter standing up and giving a sermon out there. Okay, and I titled the sermon as a new beginning. Why a new beginning? Because it was a new beginning, right? The church has been birthed. The church is starting up. And, and what Peter is doing is like the first sermon in the new era is a new beginning. It's a new beginning of what God is doing. All this while, while we were looking at Acts 1, uh, through Acts of, we saw the preparation of a heart. This is where the action begins. Right? Picture mein action abhi chalu ho hai ah. So this is where the action begins. It's the new beginning. So first of all, it's the first public proclamation of the gospel. And it happened right after a strange phenomenon called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? Now, before we begin, I want us to see, like I was thinking about Peter. Like, you know, he is preaching a sermon. Generally, when we have to preach a sermon, uh, Jensen and I, we have to take time. We, it, it takes a week process <laughs> for some time. Sometimes, you know, we have to look into the text because we want to be faithful to the text. We want to understand what is the context of what's been spoken. And then um, we look at our commentaries and we see, okay, fine. What is God trying to speak to us? It takes time. It takes time. Sometimes, like Jensen might just come up in a day. Like for me also, sometimes it happens in a day, but otherwise it just takes kind of a couple of times to just understand uh, what the passage is. But I look at Peter and it, it looks like as if no preparation only. He came for something else. All of a sudden, either baptism ho gaya pavitra atma ka, power ha gaya ekdam se, and 4 minutes chal laga hoega shayad sochne ke liye, and 40 minute ka sermon preach ka dala. Amazing, no? Kya tayari tha? Aisa hota to hum log bhi aisi aata to subhe subhe. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but listen to this. We might look at Peter and say, wow, charmit me But no, we have to see that there was a preparation. Like, you know, he spent three years, he spent so much time with Savior Jesus. You know, he understood what was the message of the kingdom. Like, teen saal training hone ke baujud at the end when we see when, uh, you know, Jesus was taken up. Someone said, oh, they go disciple Jara Jesus ka. <laughs> and then kya karta ho? He denied and ran away. That same guy is standing right now before hundreds of people. So one, preparation nahi tha, nahi bol sakta hai. There was a preparation. He was spending time with Jesus. 
but then what happened was it was not just initiated by peter it was initiated by the power of the holy spirit right his preaching came out of the fullness of his heart it overflowed from the fullness of his heart and it was a spirit filled message when he stood up and he preached the sermon now we want to look at what are things that he is talking what is it that he is communicating to the people there so we need to know one of thing there was a need for him to stand up and explain what's happening because what was happening was very unusual right no one had experienced that no one knew what is happening suddenly like uh, 120 people gathered and there's baptism of the holy spirit and people are speaking in different tongues and also bahar bahar bhi bahut sara halchar ho raha hai a lot of disturbances outside and suddenly people are gathered around that place and they're wondering what is happening what are they talking about are he is talking my language they're just talking my language there is a chaos and there was a need for peter to stand up and explain what is happening and that is what he does right so the, there are three things i believe he is communicating to the people number one he is saying henceforth it will be the movement of the holy spirit henceforth it will be the movement of the holy spirit and he is talking to a people a context of people who knows who might have had some understanding about the old testament about the prophecies right because he is quoting some prophecies and saying okay you know joel wrote about this david is writing so there's some context people do understand what is he trying to say he's saying so far we've heard stories of what god did through great men and women we heard god doing through what god did through abraham we heard of stories of what god did through moses right god rescued his people from egypt uh, you know egypt and he used this man called moses we heard about joshua we heard of this king david we heard of this solomon and all of these things we have heard how god who god is and how god operated but listen to me listen to me my brothers henceforth it will be the movement of the holy spirit right it will be the movement of the holy spirit that is what he is communicating to them and he is starting he, when you look at these the first 14 to 21 verses says but peter standing with the 11 lifted up his voice and addressed to them men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known to you and give ear to my words for these people are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day but this is what was uttered through prophet joel so what he does is he is giving them a context they seem like they are drunk but they are not drunk there's something very extraordinary that god is about to do and god is doing among them right and then he says what you see is the promise that god made to his people many 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 years back it's a fulfillment of god's promise it's a new beginning it's going to be a new era it's going to be something new god's doing something new and it's not something that god just all of a sudden came up no he spoke about it long back let me show you this let me show you my brothers it's written in joel and he points it out to them and he says and and listen to the description it says and in the last days it shall be god declares that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh amazing isn't that in the old testament it was only meant for at certain time and certain people but god had promised long back there is going to come a day when i will pour out my spirit on all flesh and at all times right and then he says pour out my flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even on my male servants and female servants in those days i will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and i will show wonders in heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the lord comes the great and magnificent day and it shall come to pass that everyone can you say everyone everyone who calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what peter is showing them is this is god's plan this is what god wanted to do god is doing an extraordinary thing when we look at from the old testament to the new testament we see how 
we were in sin and god is rescuing us right god is bringing provisions he's he's bringing us to this point where now we are not just trying to live our christian life on our flesh but he provides a helpmate and that is the spirit of god and that is what we see such a beautiful description you know where our lives is not moving forward on our strength our abilities but god provides a helpmate right he points to the scripture but look at joel in the book of joel if you look most of the part of joel is judgment he mostly talks about judgment but there in this passage he talks about the beautiful plan of god right even though he talks about god's judgment upon his people for their sins but he talks about god's plan of redeeming us and helping us in a way that through his son jesus christ and by sending his spirit of god that he would give us a new spirit to live life with freedom that we don't have to live according to the law right but with freedom so joel mostly preach about but we see that now the thing is he mentions about last days what are these last days abhi to 2000 saal ho gaya last day kidhar hai you know so what happened on that day it was the end of end days which means we can say that right now we are in the end of end days our savior our lord can come any time right can come any time he is continuing to do his work in the heart of his people right whoever calls on his name will be saved whoever calls on his name will be saved why is that delay why is it that we see because god is in the business of bringing his lost sheep and i don't know how many of you are in that place i don't know maybe most of you have understood the gospel most of you have received the gospel you've understood that you were a sinner and god sent his son for you but maybe you don't maybe some of you have just understanding all of these but i want to tell you i want to tell you that god is right now the delay that we experience god can come and finish everything up but he is concerned about you right now you might be someone who's not heard the gospel but god is waiting to work in your hearts that's what is his business he is just bringing his lost sheep together and what we see the spirit of god empowers us the spirit of god enables us to do the work of god the main purpose of the spirit of god in us is to do his business is to fulfill god's call is to bring the lost souls it's not just for us to have us as individuals to have a good life it's not about that we have to understand god's spirit of god's spirit came upon his people to empower them to unite their hearts so he can do a greater thing among them right so what are things that we do we see the holy spirit moving through us right when we look at the disciples when we see the passages and what god does we see how the spirit of god the empowerment of the spirit of god is helping them move forward the number one thing we see the disciples didn't know what to expect right at that point till that point they were with jesus and they had a different expectation from jesus they thought jesus will come establish his throne he will be the king and we will rule under his dominion but all of a sudden we see jesus has died he's gone right and they didn't know what to expect they don't know what the future looks like jesus is dead and now that we are in significant number of people and disciples right at that moment when they stepped out in obedience and they waited on the spirit of god to come and give them a perspective give them courage how do we see the spirit of god manifest in their life the holy spirit's movement is evidenced in the working of obedience waiting and praying together among the disciples these are not natural things that we would do in our sinfulness is the spirit of god that enable them to come together and say yes we are moving forward yes we will walk in obedience yes we will come together and pray together and we will move ahead and march ahead and fulfill the calling that god has given us isn't that what happened to the disciples till that moment they did not have the courage till that moment they did not have a direction but when the spirit of god came upon them it gave them a sense of direction to walk in obedience to wait in prayer the movement of the disciples from kneeling to speaking 
there was a time when they were kneeling and with god and all of a sudden the spirit of god enables them to stand up and speak that's what we see happen to peter right from praying to proclamation whether they were near the temple or near the marketplace they got up and moved out without fear where did that courage come from it came because of the spirit of god brothers and sisters when i told you this that you are insignificant people and god is going to use you i don't know how many of you believe that because immediately we can look at ourselves we know how frail we are we know how weak we are we know how caught up i am in my own life problems and we might look at ourselves and say not me right how can god use me right isn't that something that we all naturally natural tendency is to think in that manner but brothers and sisters i want you to see that the spirit of god if you have believed you have you have believed in the gospel the spirit of god enables you to do that it is not a natural thing that you would want to do but the spirit of god enables you to do that i look at my own life i remember when i was young christian i was 17 when i gave my life to jesus i was insignificant i was a failure in my school i didn't know to talk to people one on one i went to an english speaking church i didn't speak to anyone because my grammar was not right so i remember once i was asked to give my testimony i came to the mic and i stood there for 5 minutes and i couldn't speak and they had to take me and give me some hot water <laughs> because they thought i was i was shivering and then god brought this beautiful girl in my life who spoke great english <laughs> like how how jonty thinks about alukita <laughs> jonty <thing. laughs> and um, and with lot of struggle i started talking to her in english and god worked in my heart like if i was that saju i would believe that no how can i i didn't believe all of these things but i know that god wanted to use me but when i look at my life today i see it is only god's grace it is only the spirit of god like even today yesterday i'm sitting down with jane and i say i'm so incapable i don't feel that i am capable of even standing i don't know i don't have words honestly and i was telling jane i'm 7 o'clock i don't know i don't have the words but look at it like you know god it is god my brothers and sisters even it is the spirit of god that enables you and me if god by his spirit can work in my life he can work in your life you have to depend on the spirit of god the spirit of god will enable you right the holy spirit's movement is evidence also not just in the manner that he empowers the disciples but also evidence in the way people respond right just look at it the way people responded he demonstrated more than the power of his presence he demonstrated drawing power that not only brought the disciples together but also drew the multitudes together at the right time our dependency should be on the spirit of god even when we think about our ministry it is god who does that it is the five signs of the holy spirit that can transform our personal and congregational life when we look at it from this context number 1 we can draw together in prayer even while we face an obscured future that's the hope that we have right now we can all sit here and we can look at our future and we can say how obscured i don't know but it is the spirit of god that will draw us together and especially the word that is used is prayer we see he draws us together in prayer what does prayer communicate it communicates dependency we say we all are weak but together as we come together in prayer depending on god god will do great and mighty things we can wait on the holy spirit to fill us even as we do not know what we want to do even when we don't have a sense of direction the spirit of god gives us a sense of direction he is the one who brings that those opportunities because god is at work when he immerses us in jesus we will know it we will get out of our comfort zones right on our natural tendencies it's not easy we would like to be on the couch you know it is a spirit of god that will pull us out of that comfort zones so that we can run to our communities with the message of jesus filled with clarity and conviction 
and we may be filled with the Holy Spirit drawing multitudes to us. It is going to be the work of the Spirit. Why am I emphasizing all of these things? Is because I am making all of you realize that God is doing a great thing through you, but it is not by your strength. It is by the Spirit of God that He is going to do great things. Right? Finally, as we Go, we will experience the evidence of the Holy Spirit movement among us. We will stand in unity as the 11 did with Peter. What a wonderful unity. What a wonderful mission. It's mind-blowing. They, they impacted the whole world, my brothers and sisters. They shook the world is what they They shook it. And it, even today we can sense that what the Spirit of God started. It started with that unity among those 11 and it started growing. It is the work of the Spirit of God, right? We will stand in unity with those who do the heavy lifting of visioning, leading, and guiding. It is going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? The number two, what is he trying to communicate? Number one, he says, henceforth, it will be the movement of the Holy Spirit. The second thing he is communicating through those sermon and passages is that Christ was, is, and will always remain the center of this movement. Nobody else, no man. Christ was, is, and will always remain the center of this movement. Look at me from verse 22 to 33. Like immediately after uh, giving them a context of what is happening, what the Spirit of God is doing, he brings them to the center. It's important. Right? He says, men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men, God raised him up. Losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at the right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul in Hades. Or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, brothers, I may say to you this with confidence that this patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, right? He's talking about the prophecy that David is making, that he will not be dead, he will stay alive. But he's saying, he's not talking about himself. He's talking about Christ. The man that you, were, you just saw, because he's talking into a context of people who saw Jesus walk and everyone have a different opinion about who this Christ was, right? So he's giving them a context. He's saying, hey, you know what? Okay, what is happening is happening. The Spirit of God is doing, but it is in the context of what God did by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. It is all about Jesus. It is all about the man that you saw. It is all about the man that you crucified. He was not what you thought he was. It is all about him. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sown with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades or did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up and of that we all are witnesses being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the father the promise of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you saw he gives them a context. He said, whatever I spoke about the spirit of God, whatever you saw, it is in the context being therefore exalted at the right hand of it is and having received from the father the promise of spirit he was he has poured out this that you yourself are seeing and hearing you see that what is he saying he's saying okay both emotions hai idhar feelings bhi bahut ho raha hai sab afra tafri ho raha hai jesus at the center we don't get carried away with the emotions. We don't, yes, of course, God is doing amazing things. It's supernatural. But in our supernatural, we don't 
leave out Jesus it's all coming out Jesus has to be at the center why am I saying that I'm saying that because so often when we look at these movements and we look at you know God doing great and mighty things so often would you agree with me Jesus is out somewhere and we we are doing all halla gulla he's not at the center it's all about man it's all about manifestation of man's power but my brothers and sisters we cannot take Christ away he was he is always remain at the center of this movement even in the old testament even in the old testament what what we see uh, everything that happened was pointing to christ christ was from the beginning he is god himself but you crucified him you crucified him but then he gives them a context that this jesus christ you crucified death couldn't hold him the tomb was like a womb he did not die he was resurrected and that's what psalms 36 he talks about and then he gives them a context that it is a prophecy that david was making it was not david was saying you understand he's clarifying that jesus david is dead david is buried he foresaw concerning the resurrection of christ someone greater than him brothers and sisters jesus has to be at the center everything that we are about to experience or we are experiencing is because of what christ has done for us right what did christ do for us what does the gospel tell us brothers and sisters the gospel tells us that when god made us in his image and in his likeness right and he wanted us to uh, to live under his rule and his authority to fill this earth with the glory of god we rebelled against him we sinned against him adam sinned against him eve sinned against him and we committed the highest crime in this universe the highest crime and the punishment was death we rebelled against the one who created us as growing up you want to test what happens when you rebel against authority try doing it with your mama and dada teacher ko bolo principal ko bolo dekho kya hota hai right we know the consequences of going against our authority in here what we did was the greatest crime that we committed we committed the greatest crime by going against god and we deserve death we broke our friendship with god but the gospel tells us that god was so loving to you my brothers my sister god was so loving even today he loved you and me he sent his only begotten son to die for us so that when we repent of our sins we believe in him he gives us a new life everything without jesus everything is meaningless what's the point of power what's the point of all supernatural things that we can experience in life when when we are not even having a relationship with the supernatural god there's no point my brothers and sisters we can maybe do great exploits maybe in the name of jesus but the bible tells us upar jayega jesus bole kon tha me to malum hi nahi mere ko kon hai tu right we can we can get carried away with all emotions we can get carried away with all of it and just leave jesus no no we cannot we can't leave jesus out of it everything we saw everything you saw happening and everything you will see happening in the future jesus is the foundation jesus is the context jesus is the beginning jesus is the end jesus it's all about jesus everything you see you experience is all possible because of Jesus and therefore Jesus was Jesus is and Jesus should be the center of our christian life should be at the center of this movement third and final thing he is communicating is christ is supreme god and ultimately the victory belongs to us hallelujah it's going to be ours hallelujah so 34 and 36 what is he saying he says for david did not ascend into heaven but he himself says the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand 
until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Right? He's giving them a context. Is a prophecy made by uh, David. And he, what he's saying, the Lord, when he said the Lord, he's referring to the Father called the Son, God, the divine Messiah. Right? What is he saying? He's saying the prophecy, when he's speaking out this prophecy, he's saying that the creator of the universe attests this Jesus that you saw who was walking by, who's dead, who's resurrected, is not just a mere human being. He's not just somebody. He's not just a simple prophet, but he is God himself. He's giving them a context. Christ is the supreme God, right? It's important for us to know. It's important for us even today in our context, when we look at Christ, that Christ is God. I don't know if you struggle with that. I used to struggle. I thought, well, God aata hai, fir Jesus aata hai, fir Holy Spirit aata hai. You know, hierarchy. No, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit is God. That's what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us about the triune God. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Nobody is higher. It's a triune God. And especially when it talks about Christ, we have to know that he is supreme. He is a supreme God. And what is, he, what is he doing? Brothers and sisters, ultimately, there is a battle that we all are fighting. There is a goal that we want to achieve. There are enemies on our way. There are stumble. But ultimately, the victory belongs to us. The victory is already ours. With Jesus being resurrected, the risen Christ, he, he rose victorious over sin, over death. People to abhi hai, but he, he is victorious over sin, over death. The victory belongs to us. Of course, we all fight with our own flesh, with our own self. We are fighting. We want to do uh, great things for God. But brothers and sisters, we are not in this battle Thinking victory milega ki nahi milega. Victory over what? Victory over everything that we are struggling right now, even with the sin that you're struggling with. Right? As Christians, sometimes we can be in a place where we look at our sinfulness and we say, no, no, no. We can be so pessimistic, right? But I'm I'm telling you, this good news is that the victory is ours through Christ who died for us on the cross. He defeated sin. He defeated death. He defeated everything that you're struggling. He has done the work, my brothers and sisters. It's up to us to believe that. What is it that is expected of us? Now let's look at the response of our heart. Our response, 37 to 41, let's see how the people responded. The people responded by saying, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is for you and for your children. There is hope. There's not just you. But you, your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourself from this crooked generation. For those who received this word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. What is our response to what we heard right now? When we see this, when we see that henceforth, it will be the movement of the Holy Spirit. Christ was, is, and will always remain at the center. Christ is supreme and victor. What is our response? Our response is to repent, believe, and follow the leading of the Spirit. That's the posture that we have to take. You know what I'm trying to say? That's not, hafte mein Friday ko I'll repent. It's, it's not just that Friday I will repent for Monday to Thursday. No, this needs to be the posture of our heart. 
You, you understand what the posture of our heart is like? Even when we are going through our daily life, we are struggling with sin, we are trying to accomplish things, we are working and all of that. The posture of our heart should be a heart of repentance because constantly we are reminded of ourselves, our sinfulness, and therefore we repent and we believe in the Son of God. That's what we do. Repent and believe. What does repentance mean? Repentance means to ask forgiveness, to turn around, because our heart is a heart that produces idols all the time. Today we, we struggle with some, tomorrow we struggle. What we do, right? We don't accumulate sabko jama karunga, maine ke end mein free karunga. Wo to seedha leke jayega tumko ni kider bhi. You know? No, we don't wait. It is, needs to be the posture of our heart. Every day, I encounter sin. I'm tempted by sin. Instead of, instead of give, getting away, I give in. I realize a mistake. I say, God, I repent. I forgive. Please forgive me. I'm going to turn around, God. I'm going, I want to be with you. And then you go around and you're walking and all of a sudden you come across another situation in your life where you are in a place where you are tempted by sin or you do something or you are... Because that's going to be a constant. Why? You know, because of this flesh. This car is a car. This car is a car. It's 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 a car. But our heart is renewed, no? Our heart, our soul is renewed. We are in this flesh, but our soul is renewed. So what we do is when we do this, every time our car breaks down, when it takes you the wrong direction, we just try and fix it. How do we fix it? By coming to God, repent of our sin, believe in the gospel, and God brings it back. But, you know, but there is coming a day when this gadi will be renewed too. There is coming a day when we will have a new flesh there is coming a day when sin will no more trouble us. There is coming a day when suffering will be wiped away. There is coming a day when all our tears will be gone. And that day is when our Lord and Savior Jesus comes down for us. That should be the anticipation of our heart. That is what we desire every single day. That is what we desire. Therefore, our posture, as we hear these things, or you know, as we... Uh, listen to posture what we see it's 3,000 men and women 3,000 God cut their heart cheer kada like them say cheer cheer ho gaya bone marrow biro sub under the goose they just flat ho gaya well abhi humko baptize karo abhi ke abhi humko you saw how it is that should be the response of our heart brothers and sisters even today for us it is not just for them it is for us today Right now, right now, our response shouldn't be a very casual response. Our response should be, God, I know I need you, Lord. I know I need you. I need you. I need you. I repent of my sins. That's what we want to do today. That's what we want to do today because what Jesus did is amazing and what the Spirit of God is doing is amazing and we all should be part of this. We all should witness because we're going to celebrate one day in heaven.